I highly suggest you stop talking about my nephew. I'm scared of you now. I'm sorry, I don't talk to Y'all looking stupid right now. So over the course of every Big Brother season, everyone always has the players they are rooting for and against. While it's surface entertainment for some, others are enthralled by the gameplay, dying to watch what happens next. Sometimes that player you rooted for ends up winning, and you couldn't be more thrilled. It goes both ways though, where even though you may be happy with whoever won, you find yourself thinking others should have won after the season ended. I know there are some people who say that whoever wins a season deserved to win that season, but I just don't share the same opinion. As such, I would like to break down my picks for the top 5 Big Brother players to never win. While I previously said I'd be choosing 10 players, as I was crafting the list, I was constantly adding and deleting players, but the top 5 remained the same. Because of this indecisive nature, I only feel most confident in outlining what I believe to be the top 5 players to never win. Additionally, I'd like to clarify that this will not be factoring in the Canadian version of the show, nor the celebrity or over the top editions. Don't look my way. Don't look my way. Go your ass outside. What'd I say? Man, fuck you. Go outside. Without further ado, let's take a look at my number five spot, Eric Stein from Big Brother 8. I'm Eric, and no one's ever played this game like me before. Along with the three reignited rivalries in Big Brother 8, a pivotal game twist was Eric Stein being America's player unbeknownst to anybody else. As such, he had to make moves and complete tasks as instructed by America, and would get money in exchange. With this of course came some moves that deliberately disturbed his position inside the house. The best example of this being his eviction vote that sent out Dustin instead of Dick. Even in the weeks prior, Eric flexed his game muscles by pinning the rogue kill vote in week 3 on Nick that he cast, leading to Nick's departure. Despite Danielle and Dick catching on to this the following week and putting him up as a replacement nominee, Eric was able to flip the vote so that Kale was sent out. While all of these are excellent displays of his ability to manipulate everyone around him including his own showman's Jessica, I certainly think it tainted his chances of winning. Eric would be sniped out in the double eviction right after his showman's placing fifth and walking out with $40,000 from being America's player. But I think he could have gotten $460,000 more if those responsibilities were eliminated. I cannot emphasize enough how insane it was to watch Eric save Dick successfully and I can only imagine what he'd be capable of with making the moves he directly wants to. Aside from that though, more than anything, Big Brother's twist squandered Eric's conniving gameplay, so it's because of that I put him in the number 5 spot. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> wow. wow. As we make our way up the list, arriving at number 4, we have Tyler Crispin from Big Brother 20. I gotta say when I first saw the BB20 cast, I thought Tyler was gonna be a repeat of David Girton from Big Brother 15. Uh, I'm David, I'm a beach lifeguard, and yeah. Nice. <laughs> I was kind of thinking, you know, people might think that I'm the dumbest guy in the house, but then I meet David and maybe that's not going to be the case after all. And I must extend the sincerest of apologies because he was nowhere close to the incredible player that was David. I was just totally mind boggled to say the least. I'm just like, I'm the one on the block and you're getting pissed off at me. So I was just totally confused, dude. In all seriousness though, Tyler was incredibly self-aware of his goofy looking surfer boy exterior and utilized that demeanor to its fullest. Aside from the Bailey fiasco, he managed to avoid a majority of house drama while establishing trust with everybody, having them think he was their closest ally. His winning the first HOH comp should have solidified some kind of target on his back, but he ended up walking away with little to no blood as Steve was peacefully evicted. Dude, I did not want this power at all, I just didn't want to be the first one going home. God, this is gonna be tricky. Ugh. In week two, not only did he receive the power app which he never needed to use, but he also managed to sway the HOH Caitlyn into putting up his biggest threat Swaggy C as a replacement nominee, who would end up promptly leaving. When Rachel told Angela in week 5 that Tyler was targeting her, he managed to ship the target onto her and sent her out that week. The only real time he was in danger was week 6 when Haley used her hacker power to nominate him, only for Angela to win the veto and pull him off the block. Even if Rockstar didn't stupidly assist Tyler in the OTEV comp and he ends up as a replacement nominee against Angela, I think there's an argument to be made that he doesn't go home. When he was sat on the block at Final Four, whether it was Casey or Angela voting, he was guaranteed a spot in the Final Three, no doubt. His contribution to the dominating Level 6 alliance that season was significant, as he won two HOHs and three vetoes before any of the four members that made it to jury were sent out. If I had to guess why Casey won over him, it'd be that her competition record included one more win than his. So although his gameplay seemed like it was running on empty for All Stars 2, I think Tyler played one of the most charismatic yet elite games we've seen in recent seasons in Big Brother 20. 
Oh, hi, A. This. That's so funny, dude. JC is my favorite person to hang out with. The pronunciation barrier is just absolutely incredible. Coming in third place, earning the bronze medal on my list is gonna be Vanessa Russo from Big Brother 17. While most house guests can utilize some skills they use in their real world profession to advance their gameplay, I feel like this game was truly made for a professional poker player like Vanessa. 400. The skills that it takes to be good in poker are really similar to what it takes to be good in Big Brother. You need the math and the logic, being able to read people, not letting them read you, and self-discipline. She was excellent at reading people, meticulously picking what information to tell to who to get them to do her dirty work. At the same time, somehow though, her gameplay was quite aggressive and she wasn't scared to make any moves. Now it's no secret that she was emotionally unstable multiple times in the house, but regardless of any breakdowns, her head was always in the game. She was instrumental in solidifying the Sixth Sense Alliance, which would promptly take control of the game as the opposing High Rollers Alliance imploded on itself. After hearing of the rumor that she started an all girls alliance, she was very quick and blunt about nipping it in the bud. Her savage nature was on display from weeks four and five as she saved Jason with the veto, got him to tell her of Austin's wary behavior, and sent him out on her own HOH as he was her biggest threat. Directly following this, despite sending out two of his closest allies over the last three weeks, she brokered a deal with the new HOH James all the way to Final 7. With her outburst towards Clay and Shelly in regards to the Jason nomination, despite being more emotional, the pair ended up looking far worse than her. In Becky's attempt to backdoor her in week 7, after becoming the replacement nominee, she was able to manipulate James's alliance to betray Becky and send out Shelly instead of herself. Um, why? And she's like, well, he's on the other side of the house, first of all. Doesn't like you personally. Um, if she won, she was 100% putting you up. 100% you were her target. She also proved to not be a bad physical competitor whatsoever, winning seven competitions throughout the season when she needed to. A lot of evictions had played out the way they did by influence of Vanessa convincing the HOH to target someone that was coming after her. In my opinion, the best example of this manipulation can be seen in the Week 11 Bowl Arena competition when she convinces Julia to go up against Austin. As a result, this move basically ensured one of the two sisters would be leaving the house. Ultimately, had Vanessa won Part 3 of the final HOH, I think she would have swept the jury votes against either Steve or Liz without a doubt. Austin, I vote to evict you. Austin, I'm sorry, Ben. You are evicted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta do it from the Big Brother right house. And I hope you can't you win the game. You can't win. I'm You're so not gonna sorry. win the jury votes. I'm, I, I know that, and that's okay. Oh my God. I'm so Coming in at second place, the silver medalist for my top five players to never win is Paul Abrahamian, specifically his games in both Big Brother 18 and 19. I'm Paul, and I play in a rock band. Rock and roll, dude. Right off the bat, I'll say the ultimate downfall of Paul most certainly has to be his poor jury management. He thought he could skate to the end by playing however he wanted to, but chose to not admit a fault in any capacity either time, as well as answer questions paraphrased from the jury rather than the juror's own original question. Aside from that, however, I think Paul has one of the greatest games in all of Big Brother. Even if you're not a huge fan of his gameplay, it should speak volumes that he made it to the end of two seasons in a row, losing by just one vote each time. Starting off on the bottom of BB-18 with his alliance members Jose and Victor leaving the first two weeks, Paul was able to rise to the top as an underdog. While his buddy Victor may have reappeared a couple times after that initial eviction, it was never long or stable enough for him to feel comfortable. Of the last five weeks in BB-18, Paul was nominated three times, two of which were still by the end of the week, and he ended up saving his ass each time thanks to his excellent social game. Regardless of your opinion on the newbies of BB-19, we saw Paul lead a true masterclass in manipulation with nearly every person working to get him far. I mean, who else could ever devise a plan for a girl with a broken foot to win a foot race for HOH and get away with it without it seeming forced? It's truly one of the greatest displays of power I've seen in the game. If you can't tell already how I'm a huge fan of Paul, I'll say that I think he'd be the best player to never win had it not been for the lack of jury management. I literally can't believe that I pulled that off. I pretty much got the one-legged girl to win a foot race. I don't even have to make a joke. That's hilarious. Finally, we've reached the number one spot on my list. If you're a fan of the show, I'm sure you expect this. So apologies for the cliche, but I think the best Big Brother player to never win without a doubt is Danielle Reyes from Big Brother 3. I'm Danielle, classy sassy diva. Just ask my family. Danielle came into the house with full transparency, telling everyone how she's a mom to two young kids, immediately throwing off any suspicion of her being a good game player. But oh, how naive they were, as Danielle always slept with one eye open, constantly knowing the flow of conversation throughout the house, helped certainly in part by her partner in crime, Jason Guy. 
she seems innocent, but come on now. We're all competitors here. The duo of these two appeared so non-threatening to everyone in the house that the pair slid deep into the game without really being noticed. <laughs> no one has a clue. Danielle and Jason are holding, holding, because we'll play soon. And when we do, they better watch out. Simple as that. The only time either of them hit the block was together at the end when Lisa picked who she wanted in the final two with her. Let us also not forget the iconic Marcellus moment, where he was so convinced that he was safe by Danielle that he didn't use the first ever golden power of veto, only for her to vote him out, albeit remorsefully. I vote to evict Marcellus. I truly think the only reason she didn't win is because of the house guests not liking how she talked about them in the DR. I think it was Josh and Jason at the jury roundtable who talked about how feelings shouldn't matter but what should is the gameplay, which I agree with, so hats off to them. I just think that calling someone the devil is disgusting. But there were no rules to this game, yeah, I think and we're, we're grading Danielle, oh. and I played the game very different from Danielle. Are you sitting next to me? <laughs> I can't. Because it, I know That's you fun, love Marcel. Danielle. As this has changed for every season following, I think that just goes to illustrate how important it is for the players to only go off of what they experienced in the game. So it is for that reason that without a doubt, Daniel Reyes lands in the number one spot as the best players to never win Big Brother, in my opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? That girl lost her ever-loving mind. Come on! Who's the spokesperson? Who started it? Who's the first person that brought this up? It was you, right? And that's when I erupt. I got ghetto fabulous. He came okay. out Who the freaking bathroom it? and he did not wash his nasty hands. Who and it's disgusting. It? I said it. I said Call it. I sure did. Go ahead and get it right now. Darn right. So those were my picks for the top five best Big Brother players to never win. Now, not everyone's gonna agree with my list, so I would love to get a different, refreshing perspective from the comments. Honestly, you can even feel free to tell me why my list is awful, because all that matters is starting a conversation. Dropping a like on the video would be greatly appreciated if you feel like it was worth your time. Dropping a dislike on the video would be greatly appreciated as well if you feel like it wasn't worth your time. But regardless of all that, thanks a ton for just watching until the end. And until my next video, always remember, enjoy yourself.